Well, hey guys, and welcome back. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica Likewise, and I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services. I'm passionate about helping parents know everything they need to know to make their children with autism successful. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics, dogs, and how they can help your child with autism. So stay tuned. <music> Hey guys, and welcome back. As I said, today we're gonna to talk about one of the things I'm most passionate about in this world, and that's dogs. I have a dog, I love dogs, I've always loved dogs, and I truly believe from the bottom of my heart, every child should have a dog, but especially a child with autism. So today we're gonna to go deep into diving, how a dog can help a child with autism, what kind of breeds are best for your child, and what you can do to help make sure that your dog is the most impactful you can for your child's life. So I have an expert on here. She has books all about dogs, all about how they can help you learn, help with your relationships. Maureen Scanlon is gonna come on and share what she knows and what she's learned about how dogs can help children with special needs. So Maureen, thanks for being here and welcome to the call. Hi, Jessica. Thank you so much for having me and thank you everyone who's watching. So excited to share some information about my life's purpose and my favorite thing in the entire world, which is dogs. And, you know, I can even add cats in there too, but I love a dog. So I'm anxious to share what good that these dogs can do for all of us and especially our special needs kids. Yeah, awesome. I totally agree. I remember having a dog as a child and I was that child who didn't necessarily fit in, but I always felt safe around my dog. I felt like I was bonded around him. Um, I had a very special bond with him. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about that today, how children with autism often have complex relationships, social relationships with other kids, and how having a dog can really be that safe place. So we'll have, well, from your own experience, and I know you have a son also who had special needs as a child, you know, what are the benefits specifically for special needs children to have a family dog? Absolutely. So, you know, there's, there's a, obviously dogs are great for all people, but especially for our special needs kids, because they have that unconditional love and acceptance for a child and for a person that they love. And that's where we get self-esteem. So one of the most important thing is, is the boosting of the self-esteem of a child. And because children respond to animals intuitively, there's a lot of nonverbal and just to have a dog wag their tail or play or roll over or just sit next to them as a security, this builds that self-esteem. It also lowers stress levels. And we all know we come home from the end of a day and it's been a rough day and there they are just greeting us. They don't care what kind of day you had. They don't care what kind of day they had. They live their best life every day. And it's impossible to come home and see this waggy, happy little pup and be still stressed out. So it does lower the stress levels and especially it's a great self-soothing and distraction method for our, self, or for our special needs kids. So when they're having a hard time communicating or they're having a little bit of a breakdown, it's a good distraction method for them to just go and focus on the animal and throw a ball or you know, just pet them. It's a great, great way to distract from some of the difficulties that they're experiencing. The other wonderful thing is that it teaches responsibilities. And a lot of our special needs kids, and we talked about my son having ADHD as a child, he had a difficult time with routine and chores and getting things done and you have to tell them over and over and over. So it really helps learn this is something where you have to take care of. And when you really love something and you really care about them, you tend to really nurture it and have that responsibility. So it's a great way to instill what needs need to be done, what the obligations are to care for something else. And it helps socialize. So socializing for these children is so important and it is difficult with their peers and in school, even with adults and teachers. So with a dog, there's not a lot of pressure to socialize. There's not a lot of expectations from a dog, whereas more people have expectations. Uh, so taking them to a dog park and letting them just fully experience all those different types of dogs, you, you'll watch your special needs child just 
you know, light up because it's such an exciting, well, I love the dog parks anyway, because it's such a cool like, social experience between the dogs and then between the owners. So it's kind of a neat thing where everyone is socializing in that environment. The other thing that was really surprising, and I found my stats on Bing.com, was that it's been proven that pet owners get sick less often. So a dog will actually help a family stay healthy. And, you know, there's probably a scientific reason behind it. I would think that we're exposed to more things. And I think the more things we're exposed to, maybe the more immunity we have. So that's just my guess on that part, but it is a proven statistic. And lastly, it teaches kindness. And so being nice to something that's um, unable to communicate, something that needs us, something that depends on us, it really teaches to have that compassion and kindness for, for creatures and others. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you know, specifically too, for kids with autism, it can also be really great for helping with sensory behaviors, meltdowns, and tantrums. So that is incredible. I know I've worked with many, many kids where they can be on full on meltdowns, or maybe they're doing a lot of stimming behaviors, jumping up and down by hugging a dog, especially for children who are um, seeking more tactile sensations. It can be really, really effective for just getting energy out and experiencing the senses that they need to experience to be able to be in their best state. And we know that when children are in their best state, they learn the best. Um, the other thing too for, and I do want to bring this up, is that oftentimes children with special needs or autism specifically can actually have a service dog. So I've worked with children, more than one child, who they were, they were elopers. So they would run out into the street and it could be really, really dangerous. And they made it so the child had a very low level of independence. And even into the child's teenage years, um, the parents would have to attach the um, child to them to them with literally one of those um, toddler leashes for that child's safety because it was an extreme danger living in New York where he would just run in front of the street and he didn't have any safety awareness. Well, he got a service dog and a service dog attached to the child. And so when the child was now able to walk in the community and if he were to try to run, the dog rounded himself and would make it so the child couldn't run. And that, would, that was really helpful in promoting independence for that child. And if you do have a diagnosis of autism, like I said, you can qualify for a service animal. If there's a specific thing that it can be trained to do for your child, you can take that dog anywhere. I know you can take that dog on buses, you can take it to schools, you can take it to the movies, to the restaurants. So that's another really huge benefit. So Maureen, I know you've done your research and I know we both share a love for some breeds of dogs, one of my favorite breeds, and we'll get into this, but there are some um, research does demonstrate there's some breeds of dogs that are better than others for kids with special needs. We know that dogs like people have personalities, um, so certain breeds of dogs are going to be better uh, at dealing with and coping with the child's behaviors, especially the child throws themselves on the dog. Um, not all breeds of dogs are gonna be okay with that, but many are. So what are the top breeds of dogs that your research has found are effective for, or the best for special needs families? Absolutely. And I think some of them you're going to say is a no brainer and some of them you're going to, you may be surprised. What's interesting is a lot of these breeds are the larger dogs and in line with what you said about having that larger dog that can ground himself and sort of hold that child back. I think, um, and again, the child laying on the dog, I, I think that has quite a bit to do with this. As you said that it just sort of clicked for me. So the number one is a golden retriever. And that's not a big surprise. You know, they're just big teddy bears. So golden retriever. And the second one is a Labrador, which they're high energy. And so when you have a high energy child uh, that likes to run, the Labrador is going to be absolutely thrilled with that. There's one that is not on the list that I think would be also really, really good. And I've seen it with my own grandchildren is a Border Collie. So they're also very high energy and they also uh, herd. So they will actually sort of cut the child off if they're running um, into danger or, you know, close to something. So border collies are great. I've had a couple as well as an Australian. 
And this one is near and dear to our hearts and they get a bad rap, but we love them and they're just amazing. And dogs are only as good as they're human. So the pit bull, just one big, big, chunky little love bug, right? And I think Jessica, you have a comment about this. I do, yes, I do have a pit bull myself. And you know, they're, they have the rap of being bred to fight. But the truth is that pit bulls were originally bred to babysit and protect children. They were the original nanny dogs. The pit bull is not a purebred. There is really no purebred pit bull. A pit bull was a designed breed and they were actually designed to look after children because they are very loyal and they're very easy, eager to please. I mean, your, your pit bull just wants you to be happy all the time. I have a pity myself. I mean, he's like the love of my life. Um, if he lived forever, I would have no need for a relationship, uh, but he's just amazing. And you know that's why dogs, they have the rap for biting. It's because they want to please their owner. So they're very impressionable. They'll do whatever you want. But my guy, he's so sweet. I mean, I, I, he's so good with kids. And you know, even for me, he lets me lay all over him and he sighs so he's like, <sighs> when like his mom has had a bad day and like pulls him on the pillow and like cuddles him. But I mean, I, I'm a big believer that they're great dogs for kids. Definitely. And, yeah. Definitely. And this one was a little surprising to me and I've never had one, but it is my husband's favorite. And we, he sends me videos on these dogs all the time. And that's a Corgi, which they're little bitty legs and they're chunky little bodies. I just think they're just the cutest things ever, but they are good for special needs children. Uh, this one, a Great Dane. So, you know, just saddle it up and put your child on there. No, I'm just kidding. These are, they're just, big big babies in a big body and they're just the sweetest every great dane i've ever seen is the biggest lover they don't know they're that big they think they're lap dogs but i think great danes are a great addition of course you need to make sure you have the yard and the space you don't want him in a 600 square foot apartment and another large dog would be the saint bernard which Obviously, you think about the heritage of the St. Bernard. They are caretakers with their little barrel of medicine and, you know, rescue. So that makes a lot of sense. And this one surprised me as well, the Beagle. So the Beagle is very protective, very energetic. They are also good uh, alerters. So Beagles are very vocal. They are very much, um, they bark often. So that would probably be a good alerter for say a seizure or say danger they're very aware of danger and they're able to communicate and then these two big ones the newfoundland and the bernese mountain dog so you can see that on the list there's a lot of the big babies and i just love love that they're they're big and their hearts are as big as their bodies so there's our list yeah, and I'm a big believer that for kids, big dogs are better. A lot of times parents think, well, I want to get a small dog because the small dog is better for my kid because it's their size. And there's always this fear of a big dog hurting a small dog, and I mean, a child. And you know, yes, there, that's happened. We've seen that in the news reports. And so you should always, you know, my disclaimer is we're not telling you to leave your child alone with a dog just for... Um, <laughs> for legal purposes, that's our disclaimer. But, you know, the, the reality of it is, is that kids will often throw themselves on dogs and, and big dogs are just able to absorb that better. And I find that big dogs tend to actually be more um, calm when kids are throwing themselves all over than let's say a chihuahua that might be smaller than your child and not handle it well if the child is trying to go give it a big hug and throwing itself or playing with it. So I find that big dogs are, are fantastic for kids. But um, thank you so much. And, and, you know, and I also just want to put this plug out there. You know, obviously, if you're getting a service dog for your child, you have to go through service dog organizations. They have to be trained to do a specific skill. And um, there's funding for that. And it can be very expensive. I can have, I'll have some links for that in the video if you're interested in a service dog. But my plug as a dog lover and a dog owner is please rescue a dog. If you're watching this video and you were maybe on the fence about getting your child a dog, um, please go to a rescue. Don't don't buy a designer breed dog. I mean, all dog all dogs are amazing. The designer breed dogs are equally as love, lovable and loving. But there's so many dogs in shelters that need a home, and I would 
Um, I believe that if everyone adopts and rescues, then we'll have less people breeding dogs in their backyard. Um, and so also mutts, like my pup, he's a, he's a big, he's a mix, he's a pity mix, but they tend to live longer and have less health issues. So you'll have less bed bills. So that's my little shameless plug for that. And speaking of shameless plugs, Maureen, I know you have some books about how dogs can help be your coach, your relationship, your therapist. So tell us a little bit about your books. Um, we'll have links to them below also if you're interested in them. Uh, but Maureen, tell us about your books and how people can get them. What a wonderful lead in. I love that. Speaking of shameless plugs, thank you. I do have two books out. The first one is called My Dog is More Enlightened Than I Am. And it really just relates the dogs and the experiences that you have in life and how you can live spontaneously, nurture relationships, be mindful. And those are all those things that dogs do. They love us unconditionally. And the second book is really about relationships, the romantic love, the dating, and the long-term, how those dogs teach us how to be better in those relationships, those romantic relationships. And it's a great little guide and it has all of my stories and experiences. You'll learn all about Jade and Brody, my Australian and Chihuahua. And, and uh, there are a lot of fun little goofy stories in there. So those are both available on Amazon and also Barnes and Noble and Outskirts Press. And my website is uh, lifecoachmaureen.com and you can also purchase the books there. So I appreciate it. Thank you for that, Jessica. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll have all the links to them in the comments below. So I hope this video has encouraged you to get a family dog, go rescue one. Um, a lot of people are returning their um, dogs that they adopted last year and when things were shut down, we're not using the C word because then it's video gets an explicit rating. But, you know, during that time, everyone adopted a dog. You know, people are going back to work and bringing them back to the shelters. So the shelters are full. So go save us. Go save a life. Um, save a pup. And it'll make a great addition to your family, but also make your family better. In my opinion, a dog makes every family better. So if you have any questions for me, I'd love to answer them, whether it's about autism or ABA. Um, if I can't get your question answered, I'll find someone who can. So head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. There's a com, there's a form there, just fill it out. You can send me a question and I'll make a video for you. So I'll see you on the next video.